technology, crypto rally the most. If I just look down my Bloomberg right now, you know, the S&P is up 8%. The Nasdaq's up 25%. I've been, you know, I've been saying this since last year and everyone thought I was crazy. The exponential age basket that I talked about on Real Vision that everyone thought I was a complete idiot for, that's up about 40% this year. And, um, you know, crypto, which everybody thought was completely dead, is up 50, 60, 70%, depending what you're looking at. Stuff like Solana is up 120%. So this 50% correction in equities can't happen because simply they just expand the balance sheet and the denominator takes care of the fall and they rise. So it, it just simply can't happen. The only way that it could happen is if we see massive quantitative tightening. But then the economy goes down the toilet and they've got the unemployment side of the equation, the inflation side. So it, it just can't happen right now. Now, that's not mean this will stay forever, but it's a situation that quantitative easing is used as a way to pay the debts uh, and particularly the interest payments on the government debt. And that was, again, part of this everything code that everybody reset their interest rates to zero in 2009. Everybody, every country. It was like a global reset. I only realized it recently that that was the global reset. And so everybody's now in this debt cycle of every three to five years of having to roll the debt. The interest payments get monetized, and that is the increase in the balance sheets. It, it, it almost exactly works out for the US, the UK, Japan, Europe, etc. They're all just the monetization of the interest payments. Disregard the traditional four-year Bitcoin cycle. Forget about the impact of inflation and deflation. Put aside any theories on what influences asset prices. According to Real Vision CEO and macroeconomic investor Raul Pal, it all boils down to one factor, liquidity. Raul has extensively developed his overarching thesis that serves as the foundation for all his investment decisions, which he refers to as the everything code. In essence, Raul asserts that central banks, including the Federal Reserve, find themselves trapped in a situation where they cannot allow asset prices to decline. Regardless of the circumstances, the result is an inevitable increase in money printing over time, leading to long-term currency debasement. If you examine a chart comparing the Federal Reserve's balance sheet with the stock market, you'll notice a striking alignment. As asset prices rise, certain assets outperform others, particularly those situated further along the risk curve. Examples of such assets include technology giants, artificial intelligence, and cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum. In his recent Ask Me Anything update, Raul provides insights into the current financial climate, expresses absolute certainty that liquidity drives everything, and reveals his unwavering focus on innovation, technology, and crypto as his primary investment strategy for the next 12 months. Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to drop your comment and observations in the comment section below. Thanks and enjoy the video. Now, I've had a very strong view for a while, which was that liquidity was everything, and I wrote all of this up in that everything code that I've talked a bit about that interview with Nathaniel Whittingmore. I went through quite a lot of what the everything code is, um, but that's still kind of exclusive to GMI. But liquidity is everything. All of my forward looking indicators have been suggesting that liquidity is going to keep rising and that it would drive crypto and tech more than anything else. And that's basically been the story of the year so far. Um, and I think that that continues. And that's confused a lot of people. The one trade that's confused me is the bond trade. And that's confused a lot of people. Bond yields should have fallen by now, and they still haven't. But I think this is to do with the debt ceiling issue, which is the other confusing thing. Because the debt ceiling issue has some real risks around it. And we don't really know how to price them. All we do know is people are pretty bearish around it. Um, and I think that's reasonable too, to have hedged around it because we don't know what can happen. But the chances are that anything that causes a paralysis of financial markets will lead to that, that expression I always use, more cowbell, more stimulus to come. So I'm going to run through a couple of charts very quickly, just to show some of the things that are on my radar screen so people can think about. So I'm going to start with my liquidity index. So this is the Global Macro Investor Weekly Liquidity Index. That's basically around the G5 central bank balance sheets. We have our Financial Conditions Index, which is based around the dollar rates um, and a whole bunch of other stuff, which leads this, as does ISM. And it suggests that liquidity is going to keep rising all the way through this year. And the Everything Code suggests that actually keeps rising all the way through till the end of 2025. 
So yes, we might have some stumbling blocks. Yes, we might have some hurdles, but liquidity going forwards as the economy slows down and the central banks start increasing their activity, that will drive asset prices higher. So that's the first chart I wanted to show you. So that's the liquidity chart. Why liquidity matters is this chart. This is the chart of the NASDAQ against that same liquidity index. That's the tightest correlation I've ever seen. And it explains 97.5% of all the movements in the NASDAQ is liquidity. Mm -hmm. And this is around this currency debasement idea. The more the central banks print, the more you're changing the denominator, not the actual value of the asset themselves. So again, the only assets that have really gone up in balance sheet terms are technology, the NASDAQ, and other like the exponential age stocks, and crypto. Also, actually interesting enough, so is luxury goods. There's a reason Bernard Arnault is the richest man in the world, is because what does he sell? He sells scarcity, right? In a world where you're de devaluing the denominator, scarce things go up more in price. So Bernard Arnault's balance sheet, um, his um, bank account goes up every week. So that's another chart for you to show. Uh, and then we can look at this, which is the chart of speculative positioning. Let me change that one and change to this one now. This is speculative positioning in the S&P 500. I have literally never seen anything like it. So the market is insanely bearish, mm. which is why we the Nasdaq's up 1.8% today, because people just don't want to believe it. They're angry. They want the market to go down. They want their bear market and they want their justice. And it's not happening. And the reason being is everybody's ridiculously, ludicrously short. On the flip side of the equation, we're going into this, and that's obviously driven by the debt ceiling. The other side of the debt ceiling is this chart, which is the speculative positioning in bonds. Now, bonds, as I mentioned before, have not been playing ball. I thought yield should be falling, but they haven't yet. But look what's going on here. This is the largest speculative short positioning in the history of the bond market. So if anything changes at the margin here, we're going to see a gigantic rally in bonds, which I'm still expecting, but this whole debt ceiling dynamic is getting in the way. Inflation dynamics on the mean, on the, um, on the other hand, are falling very fast. Things like the Truflation Index, which is a real-time calculation on chain of millions of prices, suggests that US CPI as of today is 2.2%, uh, 3.2%. I think it still goes to zero by June or July, which Alex Gurevich has been talking about both on Real Vision and also on Twitter as well. We're very in a small camp of that. We're also seeing wage growth coming down. We're seeing rents, are, rent, rents and wages are the most lagging of all. Um, so they're all still to come down. So generally speaking, economy slowing, We've got this whole debt ceiling stuff that's getting people very nervous. The resolution of that one way or the other ends up being ongoing liquidity as the economy slows. The banking issues have slowed down for the time being, but doesn't mean it's gone away. These things tend to come in phases. Um, and so technology and crypto tend to outperform. Crypto has been um, consolidating for a while, but it's still up 50, 60% on the year, still the best performing asset. <laughs> But again, it's likely to pick up as liquidity comes forward, as shown by our forward-looking liquidity indicators. And we've probably got 20 or 30 different things we could show you to say that liquidity is going up. So yeah. I remain massively bullish. There will be a correction at some point in all of this. As people start throwing in the towel on the short positions, then we might get a, a correction before we continue to move higher um, later on in the summer. So overall, super bullish. The only one that's puzzling me is the bond market still hasn't played ball, but I think we need to get through this debt ceiling thing and then a lot of hedges get unwound. You know, valuations keep going up, the market goes up, you don't really understand it, you don't want to get involved, so you stay out of it, you start to look for smaller opportunities and you miss the big thing. And it's only until I started to understand what was driving it, that it was driven by A, this massive technological revolution going on, but also the Fed balance sheets and the global central bank balance sheets. Once I understood it, it became much easier to just buy it. 
And also, I also did a lot of work in the everything code to figure out that P ratios and being driven actually by the balance sheet and global M2. It's all monetary phenomena. And it's not about it's not about earnings anymore. Everything is driven by one thing. And is this in the post GFC environment? Is that it's, why it's so hard for people? Just because the models that everyone was brought up on using are just not, they just don't function in that in that world where central yeah, banks I mean, are I was just reading the FT just before we came on and Carl Icahn is, this 50% correction in equities can't happen because simply they just expand the balance sheet and the denominator takes care of the fall and they rise. So it, it just simply can't happen. The only way that it could happen is if we see massive quantitative tightening. But then the economy goes down the toilet and they've got the unemployment side of the equation, the inflation side. So it, it just can't happen right now. Now, that's not mean this will stay forever, but it's a situation that quantitative easing is used as a way to pay the debts uh, and particularly the interest payments on the government debt. And that was, again, part of this everything code that everybody reset their interest rates to zero in 2009. Everybody, every country. It was like a global reset. I only realized it recently that that was the global reset. And so everybody's now in this debt cycle of every three to five years of having to roll the debt. The interest payments get monetized, and that is the increase in the balance sheets. It, it, it almost exactly works out for the US, the UK, Japan, Europe, etc. They're all just the monetization of the interest payments. Here's Raul Pal sharing his latest market update and discussing his everything code. It's worth noting that Raul has been talking about this concept for about 12 to 18 months, and we're now seeing it materialize in 2023. The rise of artificial intelligence and the significant outperformance of cryptocurrencies and technology stocks compared to the overall market exemplify this trend. Now, I'd like to hear your thoughts. Do you believe there will be more stimulus, commonly referred to as more cowbell, in the next 12 months? And do you think cryptocurrencies will continue to outperform? Share your opinions in the comments section below. For more Daily Dose crypto news, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.